Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to add users to our messages and make them appear differently based on who's sending and receiving the message. So right now, when we type in a message, it shows up on the same on both sides. And so we're going to make one green and push one, and we'll push the blue message to the right. So we have green messages over here and blue messages over here to the right. Uh, there'll be another video next where we save each message in the database, but I want to split this up into two videos. So before we get started, you're going to want to go ahead and have two windows open, and you're probably going to want to have one that's not in a private window and one that is in a private window or incognito window. That's because you'll have some issues with how Django saves the login information in the browser, and you will have an issue where it's grabbing the same user ID for both windows, and it'll cause lots of frustration. So to avoid that, uh, you should probably just open up one in a private window and one in not in a private window, and that should avoid that issue. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and get started by updating our consumers.py file. Okay, so inside of our Sublime Text Editor, we're gonna go ahead and go to our consumers.py. And we'll need to make a few changes in here. So right here, we have our async receive function and our async chat message function. Right now, all we're sending in is a message on the um, event that we're sending into our WebSocket. And we're gonna go ahead and add another field, add another key, and set the value to the current user ID. And we can get that by creating a variable up here. So I'll do a self dot user underscore ID set that equal to self dot scope pass in user and then get the ID off that user. And so just like in our Django templates, we can use request dot user where the request holds the user object in Django channels instead of our consumer, we can use a self dot scope, which holds a lot of the same information. In this case, it also holds a user object and we can grab that user object and grab the ID off that user object. Now that we have the user object, we can go ahead and pass that into the group ascend function down here. So we'll create another key here and we'll call it user underscore ID and we'll set the value to that key to be our self dot user ID, which we, we, which we just defined above. And now finally, we'll need to go ahead into our chat message and we'll need to go ahead and get the user ID from the event, which is one of our parameters here and pass that user ID into our self.send function. So just like we got the message, we can do the same thing for the user ID. So we can grab the user ID from our event and grab user underscore ID. And then down here, we can also pass in another line here to pass to also send our uh, user ID as well. Just like that. We'll go ahead and save that. And now we should be sending our user, user ID to our front end. So we jump into our room.js, which is where we're handling actually receiving the message down here in our on message function. We can go ahead and grab the user ID that we just passed in. And just like up here, how we did a data.message to grab the message from the object being sent through our uh, WebSocket, we can do the same thing to get the, the user ID. And so above this, I'm gonna create another variable. I'm gonna call it user ID and set that equal to data and open up some square brackets and pass in a string user underscore ID. Uh, since there's an underscore, we'll need to do it this way instead of using the normal dot notation syntax, um, but it works the same way where it's grabbing the user ID from our data object. And now we have the user ID. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna check if that user ID matches the currently logged in user. But from our JavaScript, there's no way to actually get that data. We need to set something up so that we can actually access the logged in user from our JavaScript. So we go into our room.html template. On this template, we already know that we have a request.user object that holds the information for the logged in user. What we can do here is we can use a new Django template tag we haven't used before to get that data from the request.user and pass it into an element that we can access from our JavaScript file. So right above the script tag here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up two curly braces. And now we'll put our request.user.id, which is what we wanna access in our JavaScript, put a pipe, and then we can do a JSON underscore script colon and give it an ID. In this case, we user ID. And this creates a new, elements in our JavaScript, in our HTML, that it is also 
has a built-in Django security to make sure it's secure from different attacks that you could have. Uh, so it's a good way of doing this. Instead of just creating an element, um, it's better to use this JSON script tag. And what it does here is it creates an element, gives it the ID of user ID, and now we can access this user ID and get the value of whatever's in that in that element. In this case, it'll be whatever we put in front of our pipe. So it'll be the request.user.id. So let's go ahead and jump in our JavaScript here and actually pull that data out. And hopefully it'll make more sense once you actually see it. So inside of our room.js, right below our user ID, we're going to go ahead and create another variable. And we'll call this one um, logged in user ID. And this will be equal to json.parse. And we'll do grab our document dot get element by ID get element by ID and then in a string here we'll put the name of the ID we set so inside our room HTML we set it equal to user ID so we'll set in here in string we'll do user underscore ID and then we can go ahead and grab the dot text content from that and that will be the currently logged in user so now that we have the currently logged in user what we want to do is we want to see if that user matches the user from the message being sent. If it does, we want to add a class that we're going to call sender. And if it doesn't, we want to add a class that we're going to call receiver to the message element. And then we're going to go ahead and actually add some styles to make them look different based on who sent it. So what we'll do here is we'll come down below all of this here where we are setting up the message element and we'll replace this class name line here. So instead of adding one class, we're going to add a class list and add two classes. So it'll be the message class plus whoever sent the message or plus the sender or the receiver class based on who sent the message. So we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and first have an if statement to check if the user ID matches the logged in user. So if user ID is equal to logged in user ID. So if this is true, then we know that the user that's logged in is also the one who sent this message. And we can, we can add the sender class to this message for them. So we do message element dot class list dot add, and then we'll go ahead and add two classes. We'll add message, add a comma, and we'll add another class of sender. And then down here, we'll add an else. And if they don't match, then we know the receiver. So we'll go ahead and do a message element dot class list dot add message and receiver. And then we'll go ahead and pin the child to a chat log, and that should be it. So now let's go ahead and test this out here by logging console logging our user ID and our, or we'll, we'll console log our logged in user ID, make sure we're getting that okay first. So do a console.log, logged in user ID. Let's make sure this is all working real quick. So I have two windows open here. Go ahead and refresh both of these. Now let's open up the uh, console here, send a message. And you'll see here, we have a user ID of two and user ID of three here. Um, I created two new users. One was user one, one was user two. Uh, and I guess I already had one already created. So you'll see here we have user one and an ID of two and user two has an ID of three here. So now we know this is working because we're getting two separate IDs based on who's logged in. Now let's go and add some classes to make them look different, because right now they still look the same. There's this blue on the left-hand side. So we'll jump into our style.css, and we'll come down to where we have our, um, where is it, our message class right here. So this is where we're setting up our current message. Let's go ahead and change the color, or the background color, based on who's logged in. So we can go ahead and remove this background color because we don't need that now on our message class. And that's going to be handled down here. Um, also make one more change here. I'm going to change this width to 35% because I think that looks a little bit better as well. But um, that's not really important. Now below our message class, we'll create a sender class and we'll also create a receiver class. And these are the two classes we're adding on our room.js inside this if statement here, either the sender or the receiver. So in the sender, that's going to be our blue color. That's going to be on the right. So to do this, we'll do a background color and we'll add the same blue color we had before, which is 71AEB. And we're also going to add a margin 
left of auto, and that will push it to the right. On a receiver class, we want to go ahead and add a background color of 62BD56, and that's this green color I'm going to use here. Let's go ahead and come back to our chat app, and let's go ahead and refresh both pages, and let's go ahead and add a message. And you'll see here, um, on the right here, we sent the message, so it's blue, and it's on the right. On this window over here, the other user, user2, they received the message and didn't send it because the IDs didn't match. So it's showing up on the left, and it's in green. If I were to go here and send a message, it now switches. I can go back and forth. We can have a conversation back and forth. And the messages show up on the side based on who's logged in and who sent and who received the message. So that is really it. That was a really quick video. Um, there's kind of a part one or two. The next part, we'll actually save these messages to the database. But I figured it'd be better to split these up into two videos. And real quick, actually, I just noticed there is a random curly brace at the bottom. Let me just fix that real quick. So it looks like I might have accidentally had something else down here. I'm not sure why it's there. Let's go and just delete that. Get rid of that and save that. That will be where we'll stop for today. The code will be in the description below, as well as any other links that might be useful will be down there as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.